Well, the Thanksgiving holiday has come and gone. Wish I could say that about the guests that came over to my house, but nonetheless. It was a time of sharing and giving and thanking. And hopefully you spent just a little bit of time by yourself without anybody around and personally and privately gave thanks for what you have, not what you don't have. We all don't have stuff. We all are feeling horrible about what we can't have. But that's not what we focus on. Thanksgiving, you give thanks for what you do have, no matter how symbolic it may be. Yes, uh, I spent uh, yesterday cooking a turkey, had people over, ate the turkey, got some tryptophan in my body, That comes from the turkey, not something you buy at the marijuana store. Tryptophan makes you tired, ate the turkey, took a nap, got up, was a little hungry, had some more turkey, got tryptophan into my body again, took a nap, got up, still a little bit hungry, went into the refrigerator, a little bit more turkey, tryptophan. This time I didn't take a nap, I went right to the bathroom and sat on the toilet, and that's where I had time enough to myself to give thanks. On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Welcome to the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight. Things can get a bit weird if you like that sort of thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Give thanks. Whatever. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Really? That's what you think. That's what you think, lady. Sit back. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever your liquid libation may be in the morning, and join us as we take a look at the world around us. As much as it's a pleasure to be with you, the pleasure is actually all yours. And now, here's your host, Ron Van Dam. Thank you very much. Well, it was Thanksgiving. Uh, Traditionally, the president, President Trump, pardoned uh, two turkeys Um, and also two of his lawyers who were under indictment. So, you know, it was a pardon day. Pardon me? Pardon me? That that has a whole new meaning now. I didn't hear you. Pardon me? All right. Welcome to the program. This is our time together. We don't get much of it, but uh, you're good people, uh, as far as I know. Uh, Probably not. I don't really know you. You could be part of that caravan headed for the southern border of this country. He could be a rapist or a murderer, as all of them seem to be, according to you-know-who. Oh, God. Oh, God, that you-know-who guy. Oh, God. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to take that you-know-who guy, uh, just spread him over my lap. That sounded wrong. And just, um, just smack his behind until his little tweet phone falls out of his hands. I know you're not supposed to smack the president on the ass, but I think it's justified in this case because that's what he does to other people. All right, let's stop talking. Let's let's go to the zoo. <laughs> Zoos are one of my favorite. I've, I've, I'm very peaceful at a zoo because I'm looking at wild animals that could tear me in half if they wanted to, or gouge out my eyes at a whim. Uh, And there they are, safe behind bars, and uh, that makes me feel comfortable. No, I don't like animals in cages, I really don't. 
People in cages, not so bad. Animals in cages, that's cruel. Uh, I, I went to a restaurant a couple of weeks ago. This is totally a lie. I'm making this up. I went to a restaurant a couple of weeks ago. And they had chicken on the menu. And I said, you got chicken on the menu. Could you clean your menus? I said, I'm sorry. I said, uh, oh, you got, uh, you got chicken. I said, is that free range chicken? I said to the server. And she said, uh, I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a free range chicken. And I said, well, then you could take your menu and shove it up your butt because I'm not eating any kind of chicken that was confined. Before you kill and chop their heads off, you should let them run around a little bit. Oh, God, free range. Some of them are actually grass fed. I don't think a lot of them like grass. Except for the people at the uh, marijuana dispensaries, they love it. Get it? That was a kind of a play on words. I think you got it somewhat. I'm not too sure. Anyway, happy Thanksgiving to you. What a horrible holiday, huh? Uh, we sit there and we gouge ourselves with food, gorge ourselves. We don't gouge ourselves. We gorge ourselves with food to the point where we can't eat. And, uh, oh my God, it's, it's, it's horrible because in actuality what happened back in that time when Thanksgiving, what we're, what we're celebrating was pilgrims were like nasty, horrible people and just stamping out civilization all over the place and killing at rampages and the pilgrims, the American Indians, uh, the Patriots, the, um, Los Angeles Rams. I mean, it was just a horrible, horrible time. And yet we sit here and we loosen our belt. That's what we do. As, as people from that time were maiming and killing each other, we sit back and we loosen our belt. Wow. And I think that's just disgusting. But I had a nice Thanksgiving. How about you? Did you have a good time? Did you have people over? Did you have that relative over to your house that kind of forgets to wear pants now and then? Or um, is kind of playing with themselves under the table uh, when you're serving the Thanksgiving meal. You know what I'm saying? That relative, usually um, usually vapid, uh, uh, doesn't know what's going on. You know that relative. When they say something, you, you can't respond because you don't know what the hell they said. Or it was so incredibly absurd that there's just nothing to say. So you just awkwardly eat cranberry sauce you know what i'm talking about those people yeah you don't you don't see them in, in a year they have to fly in because you don't want them that close to you so when it's a holiday they have to fly in and someone has to get them from the airport they're just gigantic pains in the asses in every way shape and form and and i'm sorry to say but someday you know they pass away and you actually say to yourself well at least i don't have to pick them up in the airport anymore i'm telling you you know it's true you're you're not that nice a person. Oh, sure, you go to church and all that stuff, and you say happy holidays to people, but you're not really that nice. And there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to be nice to everybody. That wasn't a prerequisite to be here. No. No. You, you just be nice to me is all I'm asking for. God. That's all I want. I just want you to be quiet. Just... Just sit there and be quiet. Oh! No, I'm serious. I'm serious. There's no reason to talk all the time. There is for me, because that's how I make my living. But for you, there's no reason to talk. Just take these two magic words to heart, and you'll have a better life. Shut up. Shut up. I'm speaking to you, Trump. Please be quiet. Please be quiet. Please be quiet, please be quiet, please be quiet, please be quiet, please be quiet. Please be quiet. Please be quiet. Okay, I'm sorry. Thanks. You're welcome. You're very welcome. You're welcome. We asked Ron Van Dam what he feels is the best way for people to listen to the Ron Van Dam Show. Butter it and put it on a plate. Okay, you heard the man. Get to it. Butter it up. You're listening to the Ron Van Dam Show on New England Broadcasting. 
Well, uh, Black Friday. Um, what can I say? Uh, why do you call it that? What is, why do we have a Black Friday? Is there a White Thursday? Well, that's Thanksgiving, I guess. I don't understand why we, why we're doing that. What does black have to do with buying stuff? Uh, the day after Thanksgiving, I, I don't, I don't understand the color coordination going on here. I don't understand it. <sighs> Can you explain it to me in three words or less? Because I don't get it. The last thing I would ever do is demean myself by putting on a winter jacket at one o'clock in the morning on a Friday and going to a d- department store surrounded by people that apparently just walk around with coffee cups all day, viciously looking for items that they think are on sale, but they're not. You know the game, the bait and switch. It's bait and switch Friday. You get up early, you figure I'm going to go home with a uh, 60-inch TV for $200, like that'll happen, and then you get to the store, and what do you find? Nothing. Yeah, we we did we did have sixty inch TVs for two hundred dollars, but we sold out really quickly. Sold out. Your store just opened thirty seconds ago. What are you talking about? Bait and switch, baby. And we don't have any more sixty inch uh, TVs for two hundred dollars, but we do have a nice fifty five inch TV for nine hundred and thirty dollars. That's your bait and switch. You don't even know how to bait and switch. You don't get it. You're, you're a horrible bait-and-switch retailer. Like, I'm going to stand outside in the line in 10-degree weather. Like, I'm, like, I want to be the first to, to see Star Wars. I mean, seriously? How much can you demean me? Why don't you just pour pudding on my head? I mean, like... Ooh, I, Put a sign around my neck that says, I am the biggest idiot there is. Take advantage of me. I'm sorry. That's Trump supporters. That's the wrong sign. Right right sign for them. Wrong sign for the merchandisers. Anyway, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. It is the holiday season. Are you familiar with the Nutcracker? Yeah, I know. You were married to her, weren't you? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's not funny, really. The Nutcracker is one of the most popular ballets on the planet, only. Yeah, Nutcracker. Yeah, it's a uh, f- uh, fanciful presentation of dance that children of all ages in all countries enjoy. It's about a uh, child who gets conked on the head by a Christmas tree, apparently, and dreams that uh, this child is, is in a fantasy toy land or something, and there's wooden soldiers and dancing arboretums and things like that, and it's, um, <laughs> it's fanciful is what it is. They're dancing around on their toes through the whole thing, which is something that one does when they get knocked on the head by a Christmas tree. And then they wake up, and I'm not going to tell you the ending. Uh, the Nutcracker is seriously a... Uh, it is... it is It's like it's like what rock is to country music. It's crossover. It's I, I don't like ballets, but the Nutcracker, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. And you find it entertaining. For me, it's like The Wizard of Oz. Once you've seen it once or twice, you never want to see it again. Enough with the Nutcracker. Enough with The Wizard of Oz. I know the story. I get it. I've seen it like 60 times. And each time, it gets more boring. (laughs) You can tell when something's really boring when you're not really watching it anymore. You're just thinking about the technical aspect of it, how how difficult it is to put on the production. You know you're bored at that point. <laughs> you know, I, I've got to think of something. I'll, I'll go for the technical end of it because I'm just done with the storyline. Anyway, ballet, man. i got to tell you something. And I've said this on the show so many times before, and it's my mantra. It's my mantra. The pathway to a civilized, wonderful human being 
the cream of the crop human being, somebody that everybody loves, everybody respects because they're smart, they're witty, they're thoughtful, creative, intelligent, sensitive, perfect human being, respectful, disciplined, perfect human being. What is the pathway to that? No, not drugs. Stop it. The pathway is culture. Expose your children to culture, not to your Uncle Bob who comes over to Thanksgiving once a year. Do not expose your child to him because Uncle Bob will expose himself to your child, and you know it. That's why you don't have him over frequently. Expose your children to culture. Take them to little concerts, little musical concerts every once in a while. They have them locally, if not regionally or statewide. Every state has a little symphony orchestra. And then some. Take your child to that every once in a while. May come kicking and screaming the first time, but they're going to walk away with an incredible appreciation of music and culture. They're surrounded by people who appreciate that. And then they become a part of a larger group of civilized, cultured people. And they become smart and observant and sensitive. Things get deeper on different levels. Life isn't just rooting for your sports team and hoping you could get the ball in the net and you, you win the soccer game. That's one-dimensional crap. You got to go down some dimensions here and build it up. Take them to the theater. The theater, have them sit there and watch a stage performance. That's culture. Take them to the ballet where they can see the art of dance, the beauty of that, the, the, uh, the depth of that, the art of that, the incredible art and discipline of those fine arts. Take them to a museum to look at the paintings, the renderings of some incredible people throughout our history. And when I say music, I'm not talking about the rap group, uh, Johnny Rap and, and, the, and the, the Get Down Boogers. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about complicated music that has lived on for centuries and eras. My guest today on kind of a special program is uh, Viviana, and I call her that because that's her name. She is a prima ballerina with the Royal Ballet in the United Kingdom. It's one of the most prestigious dance organizations on the globe. Uh, she uh, is, she, she's phenomenal. Um, go to our website, newenglandbroadcasting.com, and you'll see this incredible book that uh, on ballet that is I, I do a lot of interviews with a lot of authors about a lot of books. This one blew my pants off, just like your uncle. Yeah, I'm serious. So uh, she is joining us uh, today to uh, talk about the book, and she's just a phenomenal person. And we, we talk about culture, or we're going to talk about it at least, whether she likes it or not. All right, uh, you want to go do this now? Okay, we're going to take a short commercial break, and when we come back, we're uh, going to speak to uh, Prima Ballerina Viviana. I love that name. Do you like that name, Viviana? I, yeah, it's, it's, it's classy. It's classy in itself. I like classy things. Do you like classy things? Sometimes when I have a party, I, I, I hire classy people to be classy. To make my parties classy. Do you throw boring parties? Do your guests stand about with tepid drinks in their hands, vapidly striving for anything interesting to say to anyone? Do they glance at their watches around 9 p.m. and say, oh, look at the time? Your parties need something and you know it. Your parties need me. Thompson St. Thomas, fancy bastard. 
For a gentlemanly, prearranged fee, I will arrive fashionably late to your party, bringing with me that dash of irresistible British charm and a soupçon of the joie de vivre of the French. Soon I'll have your guests regaled with stories of my vacation villa in Saint-Tropez, my zany youthful adventures in boys' school, and that one time I met the prince. Quite a story. For an extra fee, I could be the cheeky one, telling blue jokes and winking roguishly at all the girls. Got a piano? I've got a repertoire, because what English gent can't just sit down at the ivories and knock out everything from a raucous pub tune to a bit of Gershwin? I know I can, because I'm Thompson St. Thomas, fancy bastard, and I'll see you at your next party. What time shall I arrive? Hello, Viviana. Hi. Hi, Ron. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Uh, Viviana Durant joins us now, and uh, she is a prima ballerina. Uh, there's an incredible new book uh, that has come out, Ballet, The Definitive Illustrated Story. And I got to tell you, this is a beautiful book. Uh, it's, <laughs> it is, isn't it? Uh, it reflects dance. <laughs> a, there you it, go. <laughs> it reflects everything. It, it reflects culture is what it does as well. Culture. You're right, actually. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely, it's a beautiful book. Now, any anybody who who appreciates ballet or perhaps has a member of the family who's taking dancing lessons, whatever, this is um, this is the ultimate and just in time for yeah, the holidays. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and non-dancers as well. People have not experienced yeah. dance before. Yeah. I think it's a way in. Well, it actually, a lot of information. It, 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 it's interesting how there's a certain ballet that has ushered in interest from those that, that really don't follow ballet or even really know what it is, never been to one. But uh, the, yeah. this time of year, the, the Nutcracker plays all over the world and that seems to be a the gigantic introduction into this world yes the nutcracker yeah it's world famous it's going to reflect christmas doesn't it yes for every child it, it even does. though i think cinderella does too that's true too but yeah <laughs> but i put it out there <laughs> i suppose well nicely done but <laughs> there you go um t- tell me about yourself now you you're quite young i understand I I was I I I'm quite young. Yes. Well, yeah, I'm sort of like um, sort of youngish, but not really. <laughs> well, you're, you're you're quite. How, how did how did you get uh, started in ballet? W- was this an interest that you had? You know, I started when I was I started when I was uh, seven year old. I was seven. Seven. And I started in Rome in a little tiny school. What would you believe now would be uh-huh. totally health and safety not allowed but it was like a little garage which was converted into a ballet school with hard floors and ah. freezing cold and things like that <laughs> that's how i started yes and that and, it's, and, it's, and then of course yeah go on sorry no go on no please. i was just saying it when i when i was 10 then i went to the royal ballet school yes. in uh, white lodge at, in richmond park in yes in london so yes. there you go which which i understand ballet schools if you're really serious about it can be quite a grueling and intense uh situation yes it's like uh yeah especially you have to <laughs> yes if you you have to kind of live ballet and you, you know it's just like a, some it's a vacation it's best to go if you think you yeah. you want to try it properly and if you do have sort of talent and you know, vocational school, which means like every day, yeah. uh, it's a little bit like an instrument, you know, yeah. it's kind of the same. You have yeah. to sort of practice it all the time and you have to live this art form. It's not kind of something that you do once a week. Yeah. Now, you you were yeah. actually uh, a principal uh, dancer at the age of 21 with the Royal Ballet. That's That's quite young. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is actually, yeah. Um, when I, yeah, when I got promoted, I was one of the few that, you yeah. know, had been promoted at 21, but I think it's kind of happens more now, yeah. which I'm all for it myself, because I think, um, ballet is quite a short career. It can and be. I think, you know, yeah. if, if somebody has talent and can get experience by doing wonderful roles and being on stage a lot more, I think it's wonderful. That's when, you know, the kind of the talent kind of shines right. through, so... And yeah. then, and then, then you go into coaching and dancing. I would assume after that. 
Well, I'm, I, I coach, yeah. Mm. I coach at the Royal Ballet now, but mm. I also have my own company. Wow. So, you know, I do sort of, I also produce and direct ballets, which is, um, Incredible. Which is interesting as well. I, um, <laughs> you know, in, in this country, uh, we're not as acclimated to the fine arts as other countries in the world, unfortunately. Uh, but nonetheless, it, it's just amazing to me, and I, and I know you agree, that when you introduce culture and fine arts to, to anybody, whether it be a child or adult, it opens up a whole new world of, of uh, uh, I don't know, it, it just, it, it opens up your mind and your, and your passions, and yeah. it's, it's just amazing. Yeah, and also it opens up the way you see the world, really. Yes, it does, it does. And yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I feel sorry for those that have not uh, had a taste of that to, to understand exactly yes. what's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just because you're bringing that up, actually, here in here in the UK, yeah. there's a lot more that they're doing there um, is. of that. They're there bringing is. dance and music more into sort of, you know, the schools that kind of yeah. they do those things or children yeah. that might not actually have this kind of experience. Correct. So they're bringing the children to more to, towards dance and vice versa, and dance goes into their schools and yes. in order to at least you know grow up appreciating it because it does change your view it of, does. Um, on, it, on yeah. your, you know your reflection of everyday life even uh, i mean to me it, it's as yeah. uh, it's as important in education as as the skills of reading yeah. and writing would be it's 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 definitely equal. Yeah. definitely absolutely yeah, yeah. Um, yeah i think it makes you a better person it, it, it does because the people i know that are cultured are better i hate to say that but uh-huh uh, the, <laughs> no, there's it's more. True, there's more depth. There's more conversation. It, it's it, it is different. Anyway, yeah, anyway, definitely. Um, definitely. Let's talk about the book itself. It it is incredibly beautiful, and we have a a picture of the cover of the book on our website uh, for all to see. And it it is incredible. It's a huge book. First of all, it's not the kind of book yes, that it's big, yeah. yeah, it's not the kind of book that you buy and then you put on a shelf and and that's the end of it. This is a display book. And, uh, it's, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And the pic- as they say, coffee table book, you have it sort of yes. you know, out on your, on your lovely table yes. and, you know, you it flick is. through it and then you have a think and then you go back to it and yeah. you, and you look at it, which is wonderful. It and is. Just, you know, it's there to look at it as is. well as obviously. Yeah. But don't put your coffee you cup on it. Don't put your coffee cup on it. Though. Yeah. No, uh, no yeah. coffee cups on no it. No coffee cups. No, I always tell my little one not to put his things <laughs> on it. <laughs> All right. So the book's available everywhere, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. And Good. it's a great Christmas gift. That's right. It is. It's great any time of year. And not, again, not just for someone who happens to have an interest in dance, but uh, it's, yeah, it's just, uh, it's true. fascinating anyway. And here's a, here's a little trick. Uh, if, if you buy the book and, and you put it out on the coffee table or display it, people will think you actually read. So that's, <laughs> they, they think yes. you're, they think you're cultured. You may not be, but they think you are. And that's what's yes. important. Yeah. We have a lot of culture in our house because <laughs> my husband is an author. Oh, and, uh, so oh. there's books uh, everywhere. So my, I would assume my, um, my little one actually is only seven, but he kind of is reading Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. See. Yeah. In, in this country, uh, if yeah, if you walk into a home and you see a lot of books, you know you're walking into the home of somebody who's who's pretty much got it. You know, what I'm saying it's just yeah, it's, it's a, I it's love a it. sign, yeah. and it doesn't it has nothing to do yeah, with yeah, I love it. Nothing to do with wealth or anything like that. It just has to do with no, you, it's where, nothing to do with that. No, absolutely, it has to do where your head is at. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Well, I'll touch it before everybody. Yes. Absolutely. Well, it's a it's a pleasure speaking to you, uh, and and congratulations, yes, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And uh, the book is available. It's ballet, the definitive illustrated story. Thank you so much, Viviana. Thank you so much, Ron. Take bye. care. Bye bye. bye. Nice. That's nice. It's pretty good. Well, uh, thank you so much for spending the time with me. I am thankful for you, as you must be thankful of me. That's the way this works. That's uh, get with the program. (laughs) I'll be back the next time another weekday rolls around, which could be rather soon. Until then, I wish you peace. Okay, everybody, position number three. And point and touch and touch and point and... Is that ballet? I don't even know. <laughs>